So first I want to welcome everybody for coming to see the show, The Makings of Hugh. Uh, my name is Steven, I go by the moniker of Step. I'm just appreciative of Missy and Greg for giving us this opportunity to display our work and just how black art in particular, how it hits us uh, personally. I chose to take pieces that are in my series, uh, which I entitled Heroes. So for me, I have a picture of, or a piece uh, Barack Obama. Just to speak a little bit about that, personally, I'm a native of uh, the DC area. So I got a chance to experience a person who, you know, kind of galvanized the country and eventually became president of the United States. And so for me, that representation, how he was able to, like I said, just galvanize everyone, but in particular, the communities of color and how he represented us in that space, I wanted to uh, be able to portray that in my artwork. And then I have two other pieces that are on display also. And so I also have a piece for Muhammad Ali and also another hero, which would be Marvin Gaye. So yeah, those are my major influences. I yield my time to uh, Michaela. So my name is Michaela McGee. I'm from the Dallas area. And this is like my second time showing here at Sonny House. I'm very grateful to Missy and Greg and Jalen for uh, putting this together. I have been creating for a while since I was young and since last year it was my first time like intentionally putting my work out and you know showing it. And so the pieces that I've included in the show are my most colorful pieces. They're not a part of a series, but uh, one was created three years ago and it's titled God's Love is Free. It's an orange and blue hue painting with a portrait of myself. The next painting is titled Velvet and it's a red hue painting. And it's about just like worth within that kind of exuberates out. So I wanted to make sure that I introduced the artist first, because I'm a curator first and artist second in this, in this situation. But for me, I've also have some art, artworks on display here for the makers of Hue. So one of the pieces I want to talk about that was that was significant is two of them, and it's the two children, which is part of the makings of Hugh. So the first one I want to talk to you about is the makings of Hugh one, which is of the little girl. How we interpret color. Color is a form of light, and how we absorb that light um, through our eyes and through our brains is how we are able to basically go through that process of interpreting how we see color. And so I chose these colors for the, the reds and the purples and some of the blues because it was a reminder of a person that inspired me, which was a young girl named London Thomas. London Thomas was one of the, the victims who survived the May 14th tragedy when a gunman walked in the supermarket at Tops in my old neighborhood and killed around seven victims. At the time I was here, I was here in Texas. When I got home, I went right in almost into ground zero and um, I found out about London and I was told that London was an art aspiring artist and I wanted to figure out how to support her in her artistic journey. I just wanted to be able to offer some of that, some of my time and some of my experience to be able to help her along her way as well as, as a modality to help her work through that traumatic experience. When they told her that an artist wanted to mentor her, one of the things that she said was, you know, an art, a famous artist wants to work with me. A photo was sent to me of her, and when you look at her, you can see this just innocence and, you know, those colors of purple and reds around her from my observation. And I was using those colors to represent her and what I saw and that potential that I see in her. And that was the inspiration why I created this particular piece at the angle that I created in her honor. Now, the model that I use is not of her, but the representation of her is those colors. But the gaze of, of the little girl in this piece is, you know, the same gaze of for those who have children when your child is looking up at you and it's depending on you to see them through and their development and their growth. And I wanted to communicate all those different aspects into that piece as well as communicating those aspects into this piece here because being on Jefferson Avenue, being on Ground Zero, it was very festive 
but in the in between of that of the of the festiveness and the busyness of you know organizations providing different supports i also witnessed some of the sad faces of children walking up and down the street with no understanding of what's going on in in the the, the trauma of what occurred and i wanted to be able to capture that within both pieces but in this piece in particular i purposely use the colors of oranges and yellows, particularly for the face in the background, as accurately as possible, try to capture the hidden potential that I see in those children. To see the capture, be able to capture the, the brightness within them that's been dimmed throughout that traumatic experience. And then to also be able to capture that same potential that I see within the children that I work with in, within education. And answering the question of how, do you, how does one help a child pull that greatness out of them. Some of the significant intentions and the multifacetedness of why I intentionally chose the colors that I chose and why you see these pieces in the makers of you. So, this show of hands, how many of you are familiar with the cartoon The Green Lantern? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, some of your you know, most famous cartoonists and illustrators went to a degree well studied in spiritual thought. And so the basis of The Green Lantern is, is literally showing you the model of the mechanics of the law of attraction, using the strength of your mind to project the reality you want to create. In the Green Lantern series, you have the green corpse, but you also have the yellow corpse. The green corpse is based on will, and the yellow corpse is based on fear. And the protagonist of the yellow corpse's name is Sinestro. When you break the etymology, etymological wording down, Sinestro means sinister, but it also means to be left-handed, because at a, certain, at a certain period of our history, to be left-handed was seen to be as evil, and so the point that I'm making in, making in context to this painting called The Yellow Corpse is many times as parents, just as we are working to instill our children our hopes, our dreams, and how, they, how we want them to be as productive citizens in the world, we also instill in them our fears and our traumas and our projections. And so the child's hand that you see reaching out to its caregiver, the yellow ring is, represent, is a representation of those traumas and those fears and those hangups, and that child is being initiated into, into that, which will set the course of who that child will become as they get older. And so in context, what that means is if I instill you with bad stuff from zero to seven, that's going to set the course of you possibly being a, being a bad person as you get older into adulthood or the vice versa. And so the question that I'm asking all of you as observers of the piece is, what are you instilling? Are you instilling fear? Or are you instilling will? Are you instilling more love in your child? And that's, that's essentially what the, what the piece is about.